In this video, we will look at the sheep heart anatomy. First, we will start with the external view. Then we will go to the internal view with different structures, layers, and then we will talk about the blood vessels. When we look at the external anatomy, the very first thing we have to be careful about the sides of the heart, left versus the right. So this is an anterior view. So when we look at that, the distinct location, a landmark, see there is a diagonal line. That is the separating area in between the two ventricles. So this is the left ventricle, this is the right ventricle, and this is called the interventricular sulcus through which passes the branches of coronary circulation. So that is the anterior view. For when we will look at the posterior view, you will see also, there is a separating landmark between the ventricles, but this line is almost straight. That's the interventricular sulcus and the branches of the coronary circulation passes through this area is the posterior interventricular blood vessels. So now the sides will be, this is the left ventricle, this is the right ventricle. So this orientation is important. So I will show you anterior and posterior view side by side. On the left, this is anterior. On the right, this is the posterior. So let's go over through the chambers. So this is the left ventricle, right ventricle. So here will be the left atrium, right atrium. Covering the atrium, these flap-like structures are called auricle. So this will be the auricle over the left ventricle. This one will be the auricle over the right ventricle. Here, we can see this blood vessel, which is very distinct, most anterior. This is the pulmonary trunk. Posterior to the pulmonary trunk, this is the aorta. Look at that beautiful structure with the strong muscular tunica media, the muscular layer. So we can see the four chambers. The at the inferior part, this is the apex of the heart. Superior, this whole region is called the base of the heart. You can see how there is the fat tissue layer which covers, protects the lab heart. For the, <clears throat> here to get this view, we have removed the pericardium, otherwise uh, the heart is protected within the covering that is the pericardium. Now we will look at the internal anatomy. So let's start from the anterior side. So when we take a cross section, now we are opening and looking inside. When we look in the interior view, it becomes a lot easier to identify and separate between the left and the right sides. How will you know? When you will look at the ventricles, look at the muscular wall at the side of the two ventricles. So this is the right ventricle, this is the left ventricle, 
quickly reflect on the functions done by the two ventricles because we know when the blood is pumped from the atria the blood is pumped to the ventricles which is the which are the chambers just beside the atria from the ventricles now the blood will be pumped out of the heart and not only out of the heart in two distinct regions from the right ventricle the blood is pumped to the lungs which is still in the thoracic cavity close to the heart from the left ventricle the blood needs to be pumped to each and every corner of the body so you will see that anatomy is reflected in the ventricular wall look at the muscular wall for the right ventricle much thinner compared to the left ventricle so if we go from very outer part to the inside there will be pericardium then this layer is the myocardium and very interior most that's the endocardium so this is the endocardium myocardium pericardium the wall in between the ventricles that is the inter ventricular septum next we will be looking at the valves and associated structures so the valve at the junction of left atrium and left ventricle so in this location there will be the mitral valve or bicuspid valve valve at the junction of the right ventricle right atrium there will be the tricuspid valve. Valves are connected by the cordy tendine. Base of the cordy tendine, there will be the papillary muscles. Then when we track towards the, more interiorly towards the wall, there will be the trabeculi carne. Then at the junction of aorta in the left ventricle, there will be aortic semilunar valve. Here is the pulmonary artery. So at the junction of the pulmonary artery and the right ventricle, there will be pulmonary semilunar valve. We can also see the pectinate muscles, the beautiful pectinate muscle in the atrium. we will now look at the blood vessels when we look at the blood vessels you know what happens it depends on how the heart has been removed so depending on that uh, the blood vessel whether they are distinct or not and also there could be some individual variability as well so when we are looking from here i mentioned to you at the very uh, first segment, the most prominent blood vessel we can see from the anterior side is the pulmonary artery. So pulmonary artery comes off from the right ventricle. So when we track these blood vessels, what we do, we put the probe. Now, when we will look inside, the probe from outside you have seen. So look over here. This is the right ventricle. So that's the blood vessel. I can still keep that probe over there. So this is very distinct. That's the pulmonary artery. So we can put a pin in here. It is pinned. We have talked about it. The next blood vessel, posterior to the pulmonary artery, this is the aorta. We can see the aorta from here as well so aorta let's follow that same tracking process with the probe the aorta comes off from the ventricle so look over here this is the left ventricle aorta comes off and this is the aorta so if we put that 
again if we pin it this is the aorta now we will look at the veins merging to the heart now here is one thing you can follow when we are looking from the anterior side you can follow a pattern for the blood vessels there is one two and three from anterior to posterior this one is the pulmonary artery here is the aorta and this is the superior vena cava posterior most so to have a better look now i am rotating the heart to the posterior side this is the superior vena cava bringing blood from the superior part of the body to the right atrium and then we can see if we could follow the probe and then look over here it's the right atrium so we can pin it the way we did it for the arteries and then and now on the other side this is the pulmonary vein bringing blood back from the lung to the left atrium so again posterior view is much clearer here is the pulmonary vein let's see where the probe goes look over here distinctly to the left atrium so we have covered four blood vessels around the heart pinning the last one among the four major ones we will look around the different location and track the areas of the regions where the arteries and veins of the coronary circulations are being eh, distributed or branching off again we will go back to the largest blood vessel that's the aorta coming off from the left ventricle from the aorta the branch comes off that's the coronary artery then coronary artery will become divided this region will go along the side of the left side this will be the left coronary artery which will then become the circumflex artery around in this region which we know that this is the anterior interventricular sulcus goes kind of diagonally from the anterior view this is the region where both arteries and veins of the coronary circulation are distributed so the artery will come inferiorly down that is the anterior interventricular artery and then the vein which will um, come up that's the great cardiac vein so if we go to the right side now we will see the right coronary artery will go around will branch around on the right region here again the branch comes off down that's called the marginal artery now if we go to the posterior side the distinct difference in the pattern of distribution for interventricular sulcus between anterior and posterior side as you know we already have talked about posteriorly it is much straight again this is the region where the coronary branches are distributed the artery coming off from this region going inferiorly that will be the posterior interventricular artery and then the main cardiac vein will go up at the very back or posterior we will see this is the region 
that's where the coronary sulcus that's where the vein will merge again into the right atrium bringing the carbon dioxide rich blood back to the heart